You're listening to The Main Event with Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn on WHIP. Welcome back, everybody. Time in the WHIP studios is 1120. Zach Gelb and Mike Zahn here with you on this Friday. The Pope is coming to town this weekend, and we have a very good show for you. A lot of Phillies talk and Eagles talk to do right now with the longtime public address announcer of the Philadelphia Phillies since 1972, and he was with the Eagles from 85 until 2014. And after many years of him introducing players, it's our honor to introduce him to WHIP, and that is Dan Baker. Dan, thanks for a few minutes. How are you? Great, Zach. Thank you and Mike for having me on. Well, thank you for coming on, and uh, it's a pretty cool new thing that you're doing, and I know that you did summer nights at the ballparks for many years, and you still do it, but Xfinity Live is now going to have you as their in-house public address announcer for all Eagles games this year. What kind of atmosphere are you going to try to bring to Xfinity Live? Well, what what we're trying to do, uh, Zach and Mike, is recreate that great atmosphere at Lincoln Financial Field at that huge sports bar. Uh, the first one that we did was this past Sunday. Uh, unfortunately, the game was a clunker, but the atmosphere in there is just uh, unbelievable. You know, number one, they have uh, a 32-foot uh, TV screen in there, you know, the uh, HD LED. It's the largest on the East Coast, I think, outside of a, a, a sports stadium or arena. And uh, they have 150 TV screens beyond that. They also have, like, four restaurants, and they're opening a fifth. They have a great DJ, a really talented crew. They have the Xfinity cheerleaders. It reminds you of the Eagles cheerleaders. Uh, It's really an exciting place to be. It definitely sounds like a great idea because not everyone could get inside a Lincoln Financial Field to to have that fan atmosphere inside of a sports bar seems pretty cool to me. But what makes your story unique to me, Dan, is that you grew up always as a Philadelphia Phillies fan, an Eagles fan, a Sixers fan, and a Flyers fan. When did you know that this is what you wanted to do for a living? Well, um, when I was real young, uh, I had visions of me playing for one of the Philadelphia professional sports teams. I guess a lot of us guys think that way when we're in Little League and, you know, that age and so forth, maybe even into high school. And uh, But uh, when I realized that my skills were, <laughs> were, were not at that level by any means, I thought how it, I wonder how it might be possible. I enjoyed the atmosphere. I, I can remember my father taking my brother Rick and me to Phillies games at the old Connie Mack Stadium at 21st Street and Lehigh Avenue in North Philadelphia, not too far from uh, Temple's main campus. Um, And, uh, you know, just going into that ballpark, we used to take the subway up uh, to as well uh, to uh, Broad and Lehigh, and then we'd walk the seven blocks from Broad Street to 21st. And man, oh man, as I would get close Zach and Mike and see those big light standards and uh it man uh and then you get inside and you see all that green grass and and you hear the enthusiasm and you and you take in all the sights the sounds the smells you know the hot dogs and the sausage sandwiches and the peanuts and it was just so neat I thought man wouldn't it be a uh, uh, something special to be a part of this, and uh, so now when I went to under I went to undergraduate school at Glassboro State College, now Rowan University, and I went to graduate school and got my master's in education at Temple in 1972. Um, but uh, you know, I thought in turn, and when I went to school, you really didn't have like broadcast majors. Uh, you, you didn't have sports administration majors. Um, you know, I was an education major, both uh, undergraduate and graduate school. Um, so I did things on the side. I started. Te- I taught in the school district of Philadelphia for 12 years, from 1968 to 1980, and I really enjoyed that. I was at the Landreth School, taught fifth and sixth grade at 23rd and Federal in South Philadelphia, and then the Smith School at 19th and Wharton 
just a couple of blocks away from Landreth. Um, so uh, that was my, you know, foundation uh, that allowed me to pay the bills, and I did my sports casting uh, on the side and hoped that it could grow into a full-time opportunity, and luckily enough, it worked out. And it certainly did, as you've been with the Phillies since 72, and then you had a long run with the Eagles from 85 to 14. You also did some big five games uh, for a very long time, uh, Drexel basketball and all that great stuff. Uh, throughout your time, though, in Philadelphia, you've seen championships, you've seen the team get to a Super Bowl. Um, what was that best memory for you? Well, there, there have been many of them. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, winning the World Series, the Phillies winning the World Series in 1980 and 2008 is, is right at the top of the list. Um, I've had the privilege to announce five World Series for the Phillies, 1980, 1983, 1993, 2008, and 2009, two Major League Baseball All-Star Games, 1976 and 1996, and at the 76 uh, Midsummer Classic, I had the privilege of introducing the President of the United States, Gerald R. Ford. Um, I also had the privilege of announcing an American president, George W. Bush, at the 2004 Army-Navy football game at Lincoln Financial Field. And then uh, announcing uh, three NFC championship games for the Eagles, uh, 2002, that was the uh, last year of Veterans Stadium, and then 2003 and 2004. Um, I worked, the uh, although I was not the PA announcer, uh, in 1980, uh, when the Eagles defeated the Cowboys to uh, win uh, the uh, NFC title and uh, face the Raiders in the Super Bowl in 81, um, I was at Veterans Stadium as a spotter for the uh, CBS uh, television network crew, uh, Pat Summerall and Tom Brookshire. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, and watching Wilbert Montgomery make that great run, and how about Merrill Reese's great call of that. Um, and uh, I, I did play-by-play uh, -play for Temple football football. Uh, 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 Wayne Harden for uh, some of the Wayne Harden years, 1977 through 1983, uh, including this Garden State Bowl victory uh, over uh, California in uh, 79. And uh, I did... Uh, a Temple Boston College game in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and I did a Temple UCLA telecast uh, when Larry Brown was the head coach of the Bruins, and uh, Don Casey was the head coach. I want to say that was like um, 82 or something like that, um, and uh, a lot, so many big five games over the years at the Palestra, and, uh, it was a, a great joy. Uh, to uh, call games for that wonderful uh, Philadelphia College basketball tradition featuring LaSalle, Penn St. Joseph's uh, uh, Temple in Villanova. And then uh, I did Drexel basketball from uh, 1997 through 2012 and still do the PA on a handful of Dragons games each year. So, um, you know, I guess in a nutshell, uh, that would be it. We're talking to the longtime public address announcer for the Philadelphia Phillies, among other notable gigs, Dan Baker. And Dan, you just mentioned that you've been present at a lot of great and big time events. Can you tell me some of the maybe the the bigger time people you've met and who are some of the nicer Philadelphia athletes you've come in contact with? Well, uh, one of my heroes, Mike, growing up uh, was Will Chamberlain. Uh, I had a chance to uh, inter to uh, interview Wilt for the Armed Forces Network um, when he was the player coach of the San Diego Conquistadors of the ABA, uh, which is where he went, you know, after uh, his Laker, the Lakers portion of his NBA career. And um, so that, that was a big thrill. I have a picture of me interviewing him, of course, which I'm very proud of. And, and, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, I know Zach, and uh, I suppose you as well, Mike, are a good friend of my good friend, Josh Weinfeld, and and Josh Josh is helping me develop a website, and there'll be a picture of Wilt and me on that website. Um, but uh, 
Uh, Greg Luzinski uh, has become a very good friend, uh, one of the greatest sluggers in Phillies history. He hit the longest home run I ever saw at the vet. It was like a heat-seeking missile in uh, May of 1972. Uh, the uh, You guys may be too young to remember, but there was Just a, a, little bit. A, a replica Liberty Bell that hung w- uh, off on the facing of the uh, upper deck and dead center field. And uh, only one person ever hit a ball that far. That was the bull. Number 19, left fielder Greg Luzinski. And uh, so anyway, uh, Greg and I, uh, for the past uh, seven years, have co-hosted a radio show uh, on uh, Merrill Reese's station. Uh, Merrill is, uh, as I mentioned previously, a really good friend. And, uh, you know, Merrill is not only a great play-by-play announcer, the best football play-by-play guy there is, but he's also a very talented administrator. And, by the way, a- another Temple grad, Temple University graduate, Merrill Reese. Uh, so uh, Greg Luzinski and I uh, co-host a show that's named in Greg's honor. It's called The Bull Session. And it, uh, it's aired every Monday night during the baseball season, and we have terrific guests. In fact, this coming Monday night, we'll be at Parks Casino with uh, Charlie Manuel. Oh, nice. Uh, the show will air live on the WBCB 1490 AM, that's Merrill Station, as well as WTEL 610 AM, that's the former WIP. Um, last week, uh, we had Mickey Morandini on, and the uh, previous week, we had Jamie Moyer on. So we've had a lot of great guests. Uh, you know, I enjoy uh, that. Um, and, uh, Mike, you asked specifically about uh, some of the personalities. Of course, uh, Philly Hall of Famers, uh, Mike Schmidt and Steve Carlton, uh, you know, introducing them for uh, really their entire Phillies careers. Uh, Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt both came in 1972, the same year I started. And that was the year that Steve Carlton won 27 games. And uh, uh, what a team that was, the Phillies' first ever World Series championship team. Um, So they they were – uh, you know, among the you know the top personalities, uh, uh, they'll ever they will forever be heroes of mine. Growing up as a boy in Philadelphia in the 1950s, and then my parents moved to Mount E from New Jersey. Uh, we uh, I was born in 1946. We lived in a row home in Southwest Philadelphia at uh, 51st and Springfield. And uh, my hero in the 1950s, growing up, uh, I had two of them: my father. Edward Baker, and Robin Roberts, Hall of Fame pitcher uh, for the Philadelphia Phillies, number 36. Uh, Later had a chance to uh, meet Robin uh, a number of times and introduce him at the the vet for some pregame ceremonies. And uh, he was a great gentleman as well as a great player. And, uh, you know, what he did, uh, when Roy Halladay won 20 games for the Phillies in 1982, he won 21 games. It was the first time in 28 years that a Phillies pitcher had won 20 games or more, uh, the last being Steve Carlton in 1982. Well, to give you an idea of how good Robin Roberts was, Robin won 20 games or more for six consecutive years, 1950 through 1955, including 28 and 7 in 1952. And 56, he missed by one game. He won 19 games. Also, nowadays, if a starting pitcher throws 200 innings or more, he's considered uh, a workhorse. Robin Roberts, in each of those years that he won 20, from 1950 through 1955, uh, threw 300 innings or more. So he was a great, great player. Richie Ashburn, you know, a, a great player, another Hall of Famer, like Robin Roberts and Steve Carlton and Mike Schmidt, uh, and a great personality. And... Uh, so they they were among the best, of course. You know, calling Eagles games and announcing, you know, Reggie White and Ron Jaworski and Mike Quick, uh, Seth Joyner, uh, Brian Westbrook, Donovan McNabb. Uh, you know, it was a a real privilege for me to have that opportunity. You you mentioned earlier uh, about a lot of big time Philly hitters such as Mike Schmidt. Now he hit some big time home runs. Not that many big time home runs this season, unfortunately for the Philadelphia Phillies. What were your thoughts on Ruben Amaro Jr.'s dismissal at the end of the season? Uh, well, I can't I can't say that I was uh, uh, totally surprised um, uh, be, with the Phillies' fortunes. Uh, 
dipping as they had in terms of wins and losses the last couple of years, uh, you know, you, you kind of assumed that uh, there might be a change there. Uh, Ruben uh, did a lot of good things, and I think some of his best work may have come this year in uh, uh, getting uh, all of those prospects from the Texas Rangers for Cole Hamels and uh, prospects uh, from the Dodgers for both Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley and from the Blue Jays for Ben Revere. Uh and uh, moving Papel Bond to the Nationals for another prospect. Uh, it was Ruben, after all, that brought in Roy Halladay as well, um, and Roy Oswalt. Um, so he did a lot of good things. You know, he played for the Phillies. His dad, Ruben Amaro Sr., played for the Phillies. Ruben Amaro Sr. was a gold glove shortstop uh, for the Phils uh, in the 60s. And uh, Ruben was the bat boy on the 1980 Phillies World Series champion. So, uh, you know, he's bilingual, uh, and, you know, he's still a young man, and I think you'll see Ruben surface somewhere in Major League Baseball and uh, be a a major contributor uh, to another organization. One thing I was surprised that the other day they announced Pete McCannon will be back as the manager next year. And Pete's done a good job with the lack of talent that he's had. But you would think with that GM spot open, they would wait for a GM to then eventually, along with Andy McPhail, hire the manager. Why do you think the Phillies decided to announce Pete McCannon will be back next year at this time? Uh, I think uh, they made that decision. And, and, you know, reading uh, what, uh, and the comments that Andy McPhail made upon Pete's appointment, uh, he wants the new general manager, and he hopes to have one in place uh, in October, uh, although that might be an ambitious goal. Uh, he wants the uh, new general manager to concern himself uh, first and foremost uh, with upgrading uh, the roster. And, and of course, the, uh, the Phillies are deficient right now, talent-wise, so they've got a lot of work to do. Um, and I think he wants the general manager to concentrate on player personnel as, as opposed to a manager. And after all, the the, uh, the contract for Pete McCannon, who is a good baseball guy, relates well to the young guys. He's had this team playing enthusiastically, uh, and even though you know they've lost most of the games, you know they've been competitive. You know, a one nothing loss last night, the three two to one losses to the Braves. You know, I mean, gosh, last weekend. Uh, they've been competitive in a lot of games. They just can't get over the hump. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, uh, uh, they just don't quite have the talent to do that. But Pete McCannon has this young team playing enthusiastically. Uh, I, I do think we've got some uh, building blocks for the future. It's a shame Mike Calfranco got hurt. Uh, of course, Ryan Howard's hurt right now as well. And uh, we know that Ryan is – not playing at the level uh, that he was when he helped lead the Phillies to a World Series championship and a uh, return appearance to the World Series in 2009. Uh, but he, but he still, you know, has you know 20 some home runs and 77 RBIs and uh, that. So that bats out of the lineup. Michael Franco, uh, had he not, you know, fractured his wrist, you know, he might have uh, hit 20 home runs this year. Um, so. You know, they they missed those guys, um, and uh, I, I think uh, Pete is a is a good hire, and uh, he'll give these guys a chance to develop. And uh, also, you know, there might be the thought, you know, Andy might be thinking that, you know, whoever the new manager is, he doesn't want to saddle him with a team that's, you know, maybe going to lose 90 games or so again next year. And uh, when – Perhaps when they get the the nucleus in place that they feel uh, can contend uh, for, you know, an NL East division title. Uh, I don't know. Maybe at that time they'll they'll look for a more long term solution and, as a manager, uh, or uh, maybe if, if Pete continues to do such a good job uh, and these players develop. Uh, Maybe he'll he'll be extended, but the contract is only for one year with a one year club option. So if the new general manager just determines that Pete is not not the guy, you know, uh, he doesn't have to. He's under no obligation for more than next year anyway. 
Wrapping up with Dan Baker, the PA announcer for the Philadelphia Phillies. And Dan, you know what it's like to see World Series come here to Philadelphia. So you've been in the ballpark at the best of times, and then you've been at the ballpark for some of the more dark times like the Phillies are experiencing right now when a whole lot of fans aren't coming out. I'm just wondering, through your job, how do you keep the excitement up? Because you seem so positive about the Phillies when things aren't going so great on the field. Well, Mike and Zach, I enjoy doing it so much. Again, it's like a a dream come true for me. Uh, You know, still, you know, even when the Phillies aren't playing well, you know, going to the ballpark, uh, uh, watching baseball, announcing baseball, uh, you know, and that and Citizens Bank Park. The Phillies did a great job with this ballpark. I mean, Citizens Bank Park, the natural grass. Uh, the proximity to the field of the seats, the sight lines, uh, the amenities, you know, the concessions. It, it's become a real social destination. And, you know, you look uh, off in the distance, you see the beautiful center city Philadelphia skyline. Uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great place to come in the spring and summer and early fall. Um, so, uh, and and listen, Sports is cyclical. Uh, You have your ups and downs. And uh, being a Phillies fan since around 1954, you know, uh, myself and others my age have seen, you know, a lot of ups and downs. And it just, it's it's the nature of the industry. Um, And I have no doubt uh, that the Phillies are going to bounce back. And I think it's going to be sooner rather than later. Uh, again, they have a lot of good prospects. That Reading team uh, fell one game short of winning the Eastern League Championship, but they've got a lot of great kids down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, J.P. Crawford, the shortstop, Nick Williams, one of the young outfielders they acquired from the Texas Rangers and the Cole Hamels trade. Jake Thompson, a pitcher down there. Jorge Alfaro, a catcher uh, who was injured when the Phillies got him, but who uh, figures to be an important part of the Phillies' future. Um, Andrew Knapp, uh, who was the catcher at Reading. Um, you know, there's just, uh, uh, Zach Eflin, uh, one of the pitchers acquired from the Dodgers for Jimmy Rollins, had a real good year for Reading. And of course, Aaron Nola. Uh, look, he's six and two with a big league club, and uh, had sparkling uh, minor league credentials at both Reading and Lehigh Valley this year. Uh, so, uh, even though there's a lot of work to do, uh, you you can see uh, that there are reasons for optimism going forward. Dan, I don't want to disappoint you, but I will admit to you that I am a Mets fan, and I love that Mets-Phillies game uh, earlier this month where uh, the Mets had a lot of success uh, with the long ball. That was an exciting game. I've never seen so many home runs in a ball game. But a lot of my friends here, obviously, going to Temple University are Phillies fans, and they were uh, very sad to see Chase Utley go. They understood the move because they had to get something in return for Utley. Uh, but they always asked me, when I told them that we were having Dan Baker on the show today, they wanted me to have you live on air introduce Chase Utley. Could you do that for us? Now batting for the Phillies, number 26, second baseman Chase Utley. <laughs> that is great that stuff. That was awesome. Dan Baker, thank you so much for coming on today. We appreciate it. Great stuff, as always. You're welcome, Zach and Mike. Thank you for having me. Well, thank, thank you, you for coming on. And make sure you check out Dan Baker at Xfinity Live for all of the Eagles home games and away games as well, even when they're not playing at Lincoln Financial Field as he brings that live experience to Xfinity Live. So definitely going to be some great stuff.